and welcome to what is the 16th edition of our Leadership and Coaching Potluck Sessions. I am your host, Kenner Burr. Thank you for joining us. And on this Friday, uh, it's always key. Anybody can play a sport in the, in the first period, the first inning, the first quarter. But when things are getting a little tense and competitive, let's say the fourth quarter, third period overtime, you always want to go to your big guns. And that's the case this week on this Friday, because we're going to finish up the week big. Uh, a gentleman I met, oh, geez, I can't tabulate the number of years, but uh, an impactful uh, member of our community here in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. I first met him uh, when we were board members with the Ottawa Boys and Girls Club. And uh, eventually, how all roads intersect, when I was doing my TV gig and I was like, oh, I ended up in his office going through career transition training and, and uh, a valuable experience for me, but more importantly, a valuable friendship that was drawn from uh, those connections. And so today our guest is Rob Dotman, and he is the managing director for Optimum Talent for Ottawa and Eastern Ontario. And we are just so grateful to have him here join us. Uh, Rob, thank you. And I, I hope you are safe and well and, and uh, doing, doing fine. I am. Thank you, Ken. And it's, uh, it's great to hear about the friendship and also, you know, you're a, you're a classic example of, uh, I'll use a football analogy right off the bat, as a free agent. So when you, when you and I first met in the, in the community involvement side, that was one thing. But when you were making a change in your career, it's really great. I'm going to use one of the terms that everybody's using now, how yeah. you pivoted. Everyone loves that word. Yes. Now. You made a great pivot into uh, <laughs> what you're doing now. And we've had connections since through, through Disrupt HR. And I'm really pleased that... Uh, I made it to your top 20 on your potluck list. So that's, it's, it's, that, it's that goes true. on my resume. That goes on my resume. <laughs> Another funny thing is you mentioned pivot and I yeah. had to pivot a couple of times to figure out my way. And in that experience, I was able to pivot and meet Jackie King. I was obviously yeah. connected to Joanne Pollock, uh, Vern White. There's a number of people that who've guessed on the show who were part of my growth experience along the way that I was able oh, to sweet. connect with. And I, we'll get into that in a little bit, but right. let's get into what you specifically do at Optimum Talent for those who, uh, who don't know. You talk coaching, you talk leadership, you talk career transitions, but for you, what's your elevator pitch? Sure. Well, and I'll, I'll make it, I'll make it quick. It'll be a short elevator. Um, we're in the talent management business and we have three, three pillars of our business. One is executive search. So our focus is on helping organizations recruit the, the difficult to hire executives in the organization, leadership side. We help individuals uh, retain their people through our leadership, coaching, and assessment business. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a, a longstanding uh, component of our business has been the outplacement or career transition uh, side of our business, which um, I, I, I would say all three lines of those businesses are being affected through this current pandemic. But certainly the career transition side is um, one that, we're finding a real um, uptick on interest and uh, how, what do I do now? Nobody knows uh, what's involved, what the future will look like. Uh, that'll affect all three of those lines, but th those are our three lines of business. And um, um, I'll just make a comment that we're na national in scope. So we have offices across Canada and we also have international connections, but so much of what happens is community-based and, and right. I don't just mean in Ottawa, but you know, the market in Calgary is quite different than the market in Ottawa, which is very mm -hmm. different than the market in Toronto. So yeah, I'll, I'll speak about generalities that exist in the marketplace um, through these changes, but um, each one of our offices is try to focus on what's happening in, for example, in the Ottawa and Ottawa Valley area. So that's mm -hmm. what I'll, I'll certainly call upon some examples and discussions there. So that's, uh, how, how long was that over there? Eight floors, maybe? That's, that's pretty good. Okay. I was going to mention too, Calgary probably has some experience in dealing with crisis management because they've been going through a stage with the oil and gas industry where, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden people had to redefine themselves. A lot of people had to pivot, but as a company, Optimum Talent, like anybody else has had to pivot and um, 3 million jobs lost in Canada in March and April, uh, people trying to find their way. Uh, when people say it's business, it's not personal, that may be the greatest uh, lie out there because it's very personal and you see it on a daily basis don't you not yeah very much so and um you know from a standpoint of the folks who could be watching there, there's some yeah. business implications i'd like to chat about sure there's definitely some personal implications as an individual that you know it's never a good time to lose a job but in this mm -hmm. time in this marketplace it can be even more traumatic 
And then the impact on family and the impact on, on what the future looks like. That, that's probably the one that has changed the most, Ken, from right. a standpoint of who knows what the future is going to look like. And that adds to the anxiety. If you add on to there the anxiety of, of everyone being at home and then mm. layer on that, I don't have a job. It's no wonder that the stress is a key component. So the, someone's mental health is a big, big issue. Um, if I can, though, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the the business implications. Yes, so if you're if you're listening and you're out there and you you're either having to terminate people or restructure or or even the personnel aspect of bringing people back to work, there's a lot of stress on the management side or the business side. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind telling you from a from a recruitment standpoint, as a, a brand of an organization, that's the fun part. It's yeah. exciting to recruit someone because you can tell them what the benefits are and the new job and people are easily excited. Mm -hmm. And then even developing themselves internally. But when it comes time to let people go, there's never a good time to terminate someone. Yeah. I, I've, I've never gone through a situation. Well, that's not true. But very rarely have I had a situation where someone has said to me, Rob, I really appreciate uh, the fact that we let you let us go or that mm -hmm. my company let me go. Um, uh, thanks very much. Uh, a learn that you a term that's used is nobody gets promoted to being VP of HR because you're great at letting people go. Yeah. Um, it just it's a hard thing to do. So even even if you do it perfectly well or the best way possible, um, it's a difficult situation. It's not anything anyone likes to do. But has you has the overlap between business and the personal and and all the elements that go into the process? How has it changed? With the arrival of COVID nineteen, I know the business pivot, but uh, when someone comes in to see you after being let go from their job, they may have been in a government job, for example, for twenty years, and now all of a sudden they're sitting in your office, and 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 they're as vulnerable as you can get. They're frightened. They're all these things, but you can usually turn the conversation and build some momentum by saying, "We've been here before with hundreds of people." Yeah. Trust us in that we've navigated these waters and we're going to be okay. And it's tougher to say that now because there are so many unknown factors attached to everything that's going on right now. You can't necessarily say everything's going to be okay in the traditional manner that maybe you would have said it a year ago. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, it, and uh, I guess what, where you try to focus an individual is that what has changed in their life by their mm -hmm. job, losing their job. And, yeah. you know, there's still a, a wife or a husband, a mother or a father. They still have their friends. There's a lot of things that stay the same yeah. when you lose your job. The big difference is I'm no longer being employed by wherever I was employed. Mm -hmm. um, so if you put it in that perspective, it can be traumatic. And, and a lot of folks will say that, you know, it's similar to a divorce. It, it can, it's even been compared to a loss of, of a loved one because mm -hmm. there's a lack of control. But if you try to put it in perspective of, okay, really what's changed is one thing. And that is you're no longer being employed by this organization. Yes. So we only really have to change that one thing. And if it's a matter of changing it to something you would either prefer to do, or here's that word again, if you can pivot your skills into an organization that values your skills, that's what you want to focus on. It, it does have, sorry if I'm rambling on here. No, but no, go ahead. The impacts of COVID are, um, it's such a personal business. I mean, you mentioned, you and I met, you and I met in, in my office and, yeah. and it doesn't mean that we can't meet this way. This is, you know, I, I know what you look like and I know who sure. you are and I see your expression, but it's a lot better when we're sitting face to face. And that is a change. If I go back to the corporate side. Um, if, and you like sports. I love movies. And the people that know me know I'm a big movie nut. And there was a movie a number of years ago that I think a lot of people saw uh, called Up in the Air. George with, Clooney. With, with I was going to bring George that up Clooney. as an example. Yes. Yeah. And I remember, Ken, there was a, a, a blog that was put together by our firm on that movie saying, you know, mm -hmm. that's just not the way to do it. We'll never see. <laughs> we didn't say it that way. But we said, we certainly don't recommend terminating somebody without being face to face. And, and that movie, for those I haven't seen it. The guy basically flies around the country doing terminations, which yeah. is not something that we do. It's the organization that does it. We're there to, to help the individuals after they've been terminated. Mm -hmm. um, but they put in a technology app that will allow them to do it like this. And here I am for the last six weeks. That's what I've been doing. Interesting. I've, I've met people on, 
on they've either called me or I've met them. I'm not, I don't, I'm not right. I don't do the terminations and Optum Talent is not for that. But right. organizations now had to figure out quickly, I need to let someone go. I don't mean a layoff, but I have to terminate their employment mm -hmm. and I have to do it virtually. So not easy, but it's part of the it's part of the new world. I think it'll come back to the to the personalized side because you know it's so it's so personal. And, and I don't just mean for the person doing the termination, but the individual receiving the notice, yes. and I'm not gonna put you on the spot, Ken, but, no. but you probably remember who talked to you, when it was, when they basically said, we're gonna be making a change in the business. No. Most of the people I deal with, remember. whereas you could talk to the manager who does it, especially if they worked at a Nortel or a company that let go of thousands of people, mm -hmm. it becomes a process, but yeah the day that you're told your services are no longer required is a day that you will remember. What's interesting and I use the football analogy. The first time a lot of guys when I played pro got cut or when they got to the pros, they'd never been cut before. I was never cut. I never had them say, bring mm -hmm. your playbook in the coach's office. I was forced to retire on my own terms. And so when I was let go in TV, it was very novel, but what saved me was the day that I was let go from TV when they had some ma major changes and overhaul was that my wife was uh, and I were scheduled to go to an ultrasound for our oldest son. Mm -hmm. It was the final ultrasound before his arrival. So mm -hmm. they could have hit me with a two by four. It wouldn't have mattered. Uh, isn't that interesting? Yeah. So I, I was fine that way. But I remember that George Clooney movie. I remember the scene and he was explaining to a gentleman they were letting him go and and uh, his saw's resume and said, you minored in culinary arts and you were a chef. Yeah. And what did they give you to give up that dream? And it, it's, it, it's a Hollywood ass type of approach, you know, okay, you're going to be a great chef now and go do your thing and leave this place behind. Uh, easy to say, hard to do to redefine or to pivot, pivot just five letters, but to say, so, okay, let's pivot and change your career. You're talking a significant plate tectonic shift in their life. Yeah. Um, so it's not you to help them transition. You almost have to navigate and hold their hand, care for them and develop a personal relationship with them because they don't just find a new job a week yeah. after they've been let go when they yeah. come see you at Optimum Talent. It is a journey. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, just to throw another movie at LG in there, if you've seen the movie Moneyball and it's sports yeah, related, a great Brad, one, yeah. Pitt, Brad Pitt, has to, they have to let their, their the, some of the players go. They have to cut mm -hmm. them. And uh, one of the things I take away from the scene there where the Jonah Hill is all concerned about what do I do? He said, just yeah. be straight with them. Tell yeah. them what, what the way it is. And this idea of, here's another word you're hearing a lot of, transparency. You know, mm -hmm. people need to be know what's behind it. So yeah. in the Jonah Hill one, he basically says, look, you've been cut, you've been traded. And the guy says, fine. And he moves on. Yeah. Uh, you know, I shouldn't say no big deal, but he appreciated that that's what he was told. Whereas a lot of individuals, they, they leave the termination meeting with the why. What's yeah. really behind it? It's just, I want, which is that, not fun. Yeah. That's what I want to get to you because the why is very personal. And you can say it's just a job and we're changing one thing, but... Whoops. You walk into a, a, a gathering, of, in a social gathering. Hey, I'm Ken of Rare. Hey, I'm Rob Notman. Hey, Rob, what do you do? That's the second question that always oh, comes yeah. up because we, we, it's, it's part of our identity and what we do. And when you don't have an answer to that, or I'm looking for a job, I'm, I'm in career transition, I'm pivoting. It's almost like you're carrying a scarlet letter. Yeah, no, you've, you've got a point there. It's, I hope it's less scarlet than it was in, in the past because there yeah. was a stigma. There was a yeah. stigma that, you know, only poor performers get uh, terminated. Yeah. Um, and I don't mind telling you, Ken, I've been in the business a long time. It's amazing how many really, really good people, present mm -hmm. company not excluded, that I see who don't fit in that, in, in that job and they yeah. move on to better things. Like it's really, really amazing. So that... That stigma, and it, it probably existed mostly in the executive search field in that, oh, I'm, I'm hiring somebody, well, do I have to, yeah. you know, I need to get their ex explanation why they no longer at the company they were at for yeah. 10 years. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but once the, you get the, past that why, though, once you get beyond the why, and you have to get past it, or you're going to be stuck in that lane, right? Always all blaming everybody else, and, and you, you got to move on eventually. And this, it reminds me of William Bridges in that book, Transitions, where mm. to transition... The fact is something has to die before you go on to something new. You have to let it go because if you don't let it go, it's like trying to fly with a, an airplane with a piano on your back. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not going to work very well. So you have to let something go. So understand the why, but don't own it. And then go to what? What next? What do I do? And, and that's, I guess that's part of 
the second step in someone's journey, is it not? When you, yeah, when you work absolutely. With them? Yeah, you the the letting go is is tough, and and I could spend a lot of time on that. I will I will share with you though that the new not that new, but it's something we've developed on the neuro leadership side, and that how your brain reacts when you're in yes. that situation. If it's if it's a lack of fairness, yeah. Why me, not so and so? Mm-hmm. If it's if um, uh, an individual feels threatened and they will, they're they're. I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but the reptilian brain takes mm-hmm. over. It's fight or flight. And yeah. one example we've seen in our careers is that individuals, when they're told, especially if it's a shock, sorry, but your services are no longer required. Yeah, they revert to the primal aspect. And I've had individuals look at me and go, "I need to get my lunch from the fridge." I'm going, yeah. "Okay, well, that's food." I need to be with my loved ones. I need to call my spouse. I'm picking up my kids after school. They they revert to what are the what are the core things that drive them, and then then you can get the situation of. So what really happened? Sometimes yeah. people will understand if it's economic. If it's we've got to cut our staff by twenty percent, and you know they'll they'll understand that. But if they if they personalize it or they look at other individuals who remained or were let go. Yeah. There's that comparative factor. And if it's not fairness, they can be stuck on that for a long time. Yeah, yeah. a quick, a real quick story. And an Go individual ahead. that a number of years ago, um, and I don't want to overemphasize this, but probably got one of the best packages I could ever see. I, I, I don't mind saying, I remember when I saw how they were being treated, mm-hmm. what they were being provided, I said, I'd take it. If I was take this person, I'd go, take it. Around. They were with us, working with us for over a year because the lack of status, the how they perceive themselves in the marketplace, how okay. they told their loved ones, how their peer, all of that was undermined. Didn't matter, you could have paid that person, fill out wow. the check. Really? It was, I no longer, as you said, at the cocktail party, introduced myself as so-and-so. When mm-hmm. I go out and play golf with my buddies, I liked the idea that my, my phone was gonna ring between holes, because I was busy. Now, yeah. nobody's calling me. So yeah. it's not a matter of money. It's not, and, yeah. and I, yeah, the employment lawyers would, would, yeah. would, would want to be fair, but you know, throwing an extra month at somebody in severance is not going to make them say, great, I feel much better. They're still, they're taking away their sense of belonging, um, going home and talking to your friends and mm-hmm. the friends and family will say, well, that's after all the work that you did, Ken, for that organization and all those oh, extra hours. Just reaffirms, keeps you in the cycle, doesn't it, when oh. people are saying that to you? Yeah. And, and we honestly, yeah. as counselors, we can't, we can't move people through there, but we have to keep letting them know their ability to, to move on is very dependent on that. You cannot go to an interview and someone says, so why are you no longer at XYZ Corporation? And you can't even say the name of the company. Yeah. If your lips curl, well, it, it, yeah, it, tr- it triggers a response. Yeah. You're not, you're not only, you're not ready for an interview. You're not ready to network, <laughs> especially in this town. You can't bad mouth anybody. I was going to say, Ottawa is small. We've heard the term six degrees of separation. Ottawa is two or three degrees of separation. So as soon as you lose your title, you lose your status. And uh, people may be not be talking because uh, they're off doing their own thing, but people do talk. Yeah. And it's, oh, my God. And people are feeling sorry for you. Oh, well. And then and then the rumors, all the stuff starts, all the stuff that comes with, why did yeah, he get what, let go? Why did she get let go? And all that yeah. stuff. And it's tough to get back on the horse when, yeah, you know, the horse is kicking you off and run away from you because yeah. well, especially yeah. if there's two stories. If there's uh yeah, you know, I left to spend more time with the family, that's a kiss of death. Some of the time yeah. I look, well, why didn't you do that before? And why, you know, anyway, I, I don't want to go into too much detail there, but but the, the personal side of it is um how people react. You you can't let that stop you from moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um in the marketplace now, a change that we're seeing, we're seeing this before COVID, and I think it will continue. Right. You also have individuals saying, well, wait a minute, what organizations do I want to work for? I'll check Glassdoor. A lot of people check Glassdoor. Yeah. Um, a situation we saw in the, in the city, there were two, two um, perspectives, and I won't identify any organization, but on one, on one hand, the individual, the individual organization went uh-huh. out of their way to explain to the employees, there's this transparency word again, what's right. happening in our business. And we're going to support you um, through this. 
yeah. using for transition was one of the things they use because people need that. They always need it, but they need it more now. Um, we're going to provide you with, uh, you know, references. We're going to give you the technology you need. That was one. So even though people weren't happy about losing their jobs there, mm. the brand of the organization was not hurt. Whereas other, another organization I saw where they let a bunch of people go, the first thing they asked when they left, it gives back your, uh, your tablets. Yeah. And you know, what's, I don't know what a tablet costs now, but it doesn't cost a lot, but that's the person's, uh -huh. how are they going to, how are they going to network? I'm going to go home and now I can't go out and you've taken away like, yeah. And all my contacts are probably on there. Everything, I, everything about yeah. my life's in there. Yeah. They could have let them buy them for 200 bucks, I guess, or given them. I mean, I'm, yeah. it's, it's, I'm not a financial guy, so but, I don't know, maybe it was really expensive, but, but for an individual got home now, now you want me to find a job, but I can't mm -hmm. because I can't go to the networking meeting and you've taken my tablet away. How am I going to get to Best Buy that takes them two months to deliver a laptop anyways? So with crisis comes opportunity. A lot of times when we see a crisis, we endure a crisis, we don't see the opportunity right away, but there's an opportunity at hand. Uh, it's being open to it. And I stayed in the CFL. Chris Corbin was going to laugh because we're talking about CFL career. I played for about, I think a total of about nine years. I probably stayed about two and a half years too long. And the reason why I stayed too long, Rob, was because I would rather dance with the devil I knew, even though it was killing me. Getting beat up, playing football, taking the Annie and Flams, all the things I needed to do to get on the field each weekend. Uh, I knew deep down it was killing me, it was beating me up. That's the reason why I had five knee surgeries, just to get back to the game. That wasn't paying me millions. It was paying me, my best year was, I think, 75000 before taxes. My real year, I made thirty three k before taxes. But you get into a mindset where you commit yourself you're a warrior. You commit yourself that this is who you are. Kind of were a football player. Yeah. And I stayed too long to dance with the devil I knew because I didn't want to take advantage of the opportunity because I didn't see the opportunity of life beyond football. I didn't want to see the opportunity. I wanted to dance with the devil I knew. And I ended up staying in what was my own individual, you know, abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. psychologically mm -hmm. and physically mm -hmm. and once i got out uh you can breathe a little bit right well and that breathing period is the one you can't really put is it a week is it a weekend is it you know yeah. i've heard somebody say look i took the weekend and had my own pity party yeah. pulled pulled the the blankets around and watched reruns of oprah and now i'm ready to go back but yeah. you can't you can't put a timing on that but it it does need to be done and from a positive perspective, um, it does usually give people a chance to reflect on what did they really like about the job that they were in and what didn't they like? Yes. And where can, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, your, your situation and, and you know, you've, you're, you've got a personality that, and I mean this in a positive way, it fills the room. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're an easy person to engage. You understand this, the sports background, not just analogies, but you know what it goes through. Yeah. You've had to change your career. You're dedicated to your family and to the community. So those are all things that um, it didn't matter where you're working. That's who you are. And the ability to take stock of what really makes me tick as well as, and this is a tough part of the market now, what you're not good at. And technology is really big. I mean, yeah. you can't, you can no longer say, well, you know, I'll get my assistant or my, my, mm -hmm. I'm not good at that, but somebody else will. Oh my goodness. That's, that's, uh, and it doesn't mean you need to turn into a technology whiz, but you need to figure out how in the job search market, how am I right. going to get to market? I can't go and, and hang out at the, uh, at the, the, the typical networking things I used to do mm -hmm. or to trade or anything like that. They, you can't do that. So yet networking is incredibly important. The high tech sector is always funny because it was always that running joke that uh, that people keep telling how many times they were let go in that sector, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because just startups come and go, people come and go, and it's all the people, essentially all the same group of people working in different locations through their career. Uh, a little easier for them because that was their new normal. And this is my segue to our new normal now. And the new normal, I think, for a lot of people would be, okay, they'll sit down with you and they'll say, hey, Rob, this is what I want to do. You go, great, but there's no market for it. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. was five years ago. There was two years ago. But you, people may have to look at it and say, I have to take on something completely different that I'd never done before. 
and start getting the habit of learning and relearning and relearning. Yeah, um, uh, you're you're sorry, Ken. You're you're right. It's it. I don't know if that's changed because of the crisis. It's it may be intensified. Yeah. Um, um, because there is always the what am I? If, if you look at yourself as a product. What am I good at? What do I know yeah. I'm good at? And that's the self-reflection. And mm-hmm. how do I how do I position that? In the old days, it was I had a good resume and I used my network and my LinkedIn. And and you still need that now. But the difficult part becomes so where where are those skills and abilities that are transferable? Where are they going to be in need in the future? Yeah. And there are some pockets of um, you know I don't want to be I'm, I'm usually a very positive guy and. It's, it, it is important to be positive in these times. Mm. There are some pockets of organizations that are, that are showing uh, revival or growth, okay. um, but it's the uncertain ones you're not sure about. The people that are hanging on mm. to a job that if they had their preferences, they would be somewhere else. And I think those individuals are, are now thinking, where do I want to be two to three years from now? Maybe I should be looking now as opposed to waiting to whatever the new world will look like. So. I don't know if that gets a conclusion. It's just it, it, the networking part of it is even more important. And a big part of networking is the personal connection. You mentioned technology. As soon as you see technology, some people you say, well, you might as well ask me to learn how to learn <laughs> Russian. Yeah. But then they get themselves into it because automatically when you, there's that psychological side of us say, okay, learn something new. Oh my God, I can't do it because it just seems so foreboding. It's just a mammoth task you're asking me to take on but then you break it into chapters mm-hmm. okay let's one step at a time one step at a time and uh, and and build your successes create some success along the way because uh, i imagine some people say hey rob i this is what i want to do and they're all in and yeah. it's your boy, you're just setting yourself up to fail on this one one step two step three step and then if you have to take one step back it's only a small step versus going back to square one which psychologically and emotionally will crush somebody yeah well and you know that it's funny that technology i think people are there's some terms that i've been tracking like they're zoomed out yeah you know like it was too many zoom meetings i mean they're yeah. it's better than having a phone conversation but zoom yeah. meetings um you know i, I love that. what we track in our business is you're on mute how many calls do you have where somebody says, <laughs> you're on mute? And it's kind of a joke now. I think we'll do that, put 25 cents in the middle in the pot every time somebody says you're on mute. And uh-huh. I mean, I'm guilty of that too. Sharing your screen, getting uh, you know all the technology that needs to be done. Um, yeah. It's there, but you can't hide from it. You know, yeah, you really can. On the interviewing side, um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've got a number of friends in the, in the business that do executive search and placement and you know, they're, they're, they've had to change quickly to how we can do this online. How do you do a, how do you do a panel interview online? Yeah. Um, we've always really done that because, you know, they're, 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 we've had this technology for a while, but now the, the ability is to go to some plot, some plush offices and sit in a boardroom and bring everybody in and give them yeah. tea and donuts or whatever. Uh, that doesn't exist. Uh, people are being hired without ever having met the people. Which is interesting. Before we start our segment, you brought up something that I found really intriguing. And I want to make sure we got into it. Okay. You're still receiving resumes from lots of people, mm. but uh, what you've seen is an uptick in the number of resumes coming from the United States of America. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, I haven't figured that out yet. And 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 they're not all from you, but it's what what I've noticed a big change in the last six weeks. The number of senior individuals, like when mm. I get the resume, I'm going, oh, this looks interesting, but they're totally unsolicited. Yeah. You know, it's dear sir or dear Mr. Optimum Talent, or <laughs> sometimes yeah. they get my name, but but just hoping. I, and I'm, I'm I, even though I'm in that business, I don't have the time to open those. Yeah. You know, I, I, might, I might screen them quickly. So can you imagine if, um, if I'm just one data point and everyone's getting resumes all over the place? Mm-hmm. Um, it does relate a bit to the zoomed out. I, I think your, your potluck thing is kind of cool. And again, I'm still pleased to be on the top 20 list. Yes, um, you are. But, but, you know, some people are saying, hey, I don't, I don't want to go to another Zoom meeting. Um, yeah. I know others that are using it as a way to, to expand themselves. It's a way to, mm-hmm. you know, I'll do one or two uh, or three or four a week. And, and it's a great way to, um, to expand your knowledge and also to network. Yeah, so, it really anyway, is. I'm, I'm, I'm running a number of points together there. I don't know if I reached out to the last point you made, but... Uh, 
Could it be the reason why you're getting resumes too is because again, it's such a personal experience when you're choosing your career and where you want to be and where you want to raise your family that some people are making that shift, maybe who are self divorced saying, I see the news and I see the number of COVID cases. I see how people are reacting. I see what kind of leadership we're getting. And, you know, in Canada, the only, the only time they get mad is when someone touches their goalie in a hockey game. <laughs> yeah. I've used that now. Chris, our producer shaking his head right now because I've used that one many a time. But our Canadian spirit is a little different. And you're just crossing the border, the states, the Canada. But there's a, there is a shift in terms of mindset and how we approach things. And, and because there was a time where everybody said the goal was, especially, in, for example, broadcasting, you got to get to the states. You got to go yeah. work for CBS or yeah. ABC or NBC or whatever. And now the allure isn't as, as powerful. Well, and you know, you've got to, you've got to make your pitch. I mean, um, mm -hmm. if somebody called me up who I respected and knew and said, you know, there's an individual out there I'd really like you to see. Cause I, I really feel I'm going to respond to that as opposed to a, a blanket a resume from Pennsylvania, like yeah. it's not going to work. And someone told me this many years ago, it, st it stuck with me. One of the best executive search people I've ever met. And they said, you know, they, they were out in, in the Halifax region. I'll try not to bring this story on too long, but they said, you know, they would, they would put an ad for a, for a, uh, an executive or a senior manager mm -hmm. um, for one of the banks in uh, Halifax or one of the organizations that's a, it's not head office, but it's a, a good local area. And they right. said, we get tons of resumes from the Bay street crowd. Yeah. And they still, you know, just, I'd, I'd like to apply for the job. And they're they're If they didn't see in the cover letter that there was a connection to the Maritimes, like they yeah. were born there, they went to St. Evex, they have friends there, they love the There's ocean, no way. Yeah. whatever. They're not bringing them in because they say what happens is, and no offense because I was born in Halifax, but yeah. you fly to Halifax, you're, it seems like two hours away from downtown. You're not, but you drive through nothing but brush. Yeah. And then you enter into the city of Halifax through what we call like Carling Avenue, right? Yeah. And yeah. you see all these, again, if there's Haligonians here, I'm gonna, I don't mean to offend you, but all oh. these clapboard houses, and then finally you get to downtown Halifax and most Torontonians are going, what, why, why would I? And, and the recruiters would know that. Yeah. Why would yeah. I fly somebody in from Toronto who's gonna go, I can't live in, in, this, in this spot. So yeah. making connection, if, if, you, if you said that same individual, they had a cover letter saying, you know, I, I, my spouse went to uh, St. Mary's, I, yeah. I love, they're gonna look at it. So yeah. you can't just say, hey, I'm available, I'm a free agent come and talk to me. No, a recruiter yeah. will tell you if I spend an hour with somebody who's not valuable for a job I'm waiting for, that's my fault. That's an hour of my time I've wasted. Yeah, I have to talk to people that have a connection and yeah. that's even more important now because you can't network as well. I, I remember being drafted by Saskatchewan and flying there to Regina and looking out the window of the airplane and you can see all of Regina, the entire city. And I was coming from Toronto. I grew up in Ottawa, but lived in Toronto for a bit. Went to Laurier, so I was only an hour away from Toronto. And uh, I was like, oh my, what did I get myself into? And when I was passionate about football, I could play football. So a little different scenario versus a Bay Street or going to Halifax. But yeah. you're right, that personal connection because you need to know that someone's gonna be vested in the experience and be open to the experience that you're that they're going to take on and and maybe that's maybe that's one of the pluses about where we're at now is again we could we could focus on the crisis we can focus on, focus on this, a global pandemic but somewhere along the way we're going to start getting out of it and there's going to be a new normal and you have to embrace new opportunities you have to be open to new opportunities you can't live looking over your shoulder going oh i wish i wish i wish i could have gone back to that day because that day is gone yeah yeah right very very much so and the the other, I'll tie it into your uh, analogy about work playing in Regina. Um, there needs to be a, there needs to be a connection. I'd rather it's not volume. It's not I send out 150 resumes. Yeah. I'd rather you send out five that were targeted. Mm -hmm. And our our managing partner in uh, in Saskatchewan is Greg Friedler, who was a, a Hall of Famer for the for football. I know yeah. it were number I two. Him, I saw came, that you came after him, but uh, anyways, and I mean he he knows every corner in the, in the place. And, and, yeah. and if he's, and he is backed up with a good team, he would of people. Um, he's a guy that's very valuable. So know, yeah. knowing your community and, and this is where I kind of lead back to the, to the situation of career change. Um, mm -hmm. you, you need that personal touch. 
and it's hard to do a personal touch on a termination now. Yeah. It's hard to have an interview that's personal. Um, it's a real challenge for people, but but so much of it is now online. Yeah. And the online services are good. You can get a resume done pretty well online. You, you don't need to spend four hours with somebody working through a resume. But mm. in terms of setting up, where do I go? How do I know the city? How do I, who, how does the place work? How does the government hire? That's yeah. a personalized thing. You, you can't, this is an old term, but I, I love to use it. Uh, I went to a, 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 a worldwide conference a number of years ago and people from our industry, not just the folks at Optum Talent, but people mm-hmm. are saying, we're worried about technology, this whole idea of artificial intelligence and, you know, is it a threat? And the individual was a, was a futurist and he, he said, yeah, it is a threat. It's a threat to everyone. It's a threat to the uh, travel agency business. Mm-hmm. It's a threat to, and it's, it's a threat to the people management business too. But one of the comments he made was, until you can digitize empathy, you're always going to need a personal connection. You will, yeah. So I can tell, you know, people can call up and find out where the jobs are. They, there's job boards out there that are really good and they can get their resume done. But when it comes to the personalized side, you need, you need the one-on-one. And that's part of our DNA. We need that human connection. We need to connect. We need to communicate and based on the information, collaborate all in a bit to conquer. And it's, it's, it's at every level, everything we do. Well, no skills aren't going away. I don't care. You know, no one knows what the future is going to be, but you're going yeah. to need those skills. You'll need you'll need to adapt other ones, but those will stay solid, I'm sure. So, what's the what's what is the advice then from Rob Notman, managing the director at Optimum Talent? What is the advice that you share with somebody who's going through a significant transition right now? You know, you have sit down, a quick coffee, and you want to give them the bullet points. What do you share with them to sort of bring a sense of calm to their day? I, I, first thing I can think of, and this isn't, this is not written anywhere and it's not mm. in our manual or anything, but is to take stock of what has changed. And, and I'll, I'll maybe I'll just spend a minute or two, sure. whether you've lost your job, whether you're, um, been laid off, whether your salary has been reduced or whether you're fortunate to work in a federal government department where there haven't been, there's no real threat to losing your job, there may be Mm -hmm. a threat to how you do your job in the future. Um, You have to take stock of what's really changed. So from a jobs perspective, we often say you don't need 50 jobs, you need one job. You need one offer that's right for you. So go out and uh, don't go after one job, but put it in perspective of Mm -hmm. what's changed versus what hasn't changed. And the health situation has taken advantage. The economy is being hammered, but is not as hammered as people thought and businesses are coming back. There's some businesses that are growing. So number one is put it in perspective. Okay. So let's connect that to a movie then real quick. Well, some fun. Sure. Yeah. point you make, we'll connect it to a movie. So your first one, he says she's work the problem, Apollo 13, Tom Hanks and his crew work the problem, work the problem. I love it. There's one number one. I'm number, gonna number, steal that. Go number two for you. Go ahead. Number two is take stock of what you are. What look at yourself as a product. So how old am I? What's the, what's the likelihood I'm going to make a change? How flexible I am, am I? That's, that's something we do as a coach. We talk an individual, other than the job loss, we get to know the person. So, mm-hmm. and in getting to know people will like to, if you say to someone, tell me about your kids, they like to talk about their kids. Most yeah. people do. <laughs> um, if you, you find out where, and finding out where their flexibility. So if someone says to me, you know, I've lost my job and I want X amount of money and I want it to be within 15 miles of Westboro where I live and I can only work from eight till four and I need to have, I'm, they're losing me. Yeah. Uh, because now is not the time to be dictating to the marketplace what you want. You should be dictating what you're good at, but then determine where's your flexibility. So oftentimes, Ken, and I hope this is number two, yeah, people will say, well, I don't, want to, I don't want to live in Toronto. And I say to them, literally, oh, oh, you've got an offer from a company in Toronto? No, but I saw an ad and they've, they've got a job that looks like mine, but it's in Toronto. I said, oh, so you've applied to it and they've made you an offer? No, no, I haven't. I don't want to yeah. go to Toronto. I said, okay, well, bring me the offer yeah. that says you're going to Toronto and we'll reject it together. <laughs> they go, what do you mean? I said, well, you haven't even got, it's like saying I, I met somebody and I, I, I don't want to marry them. Okay. Well, we're, yeah. we're not at the marrying stage here. We're at the okay. dating stage. So, and the reason I say that is that 
especially with changes in COVID, maybe they don't care where you live. Yeah. Maybe they, maybe the job is in Toronto, but you can live here. I know a number of people, it's not an ideal situation, but they commute back and forth or yeah. they have to travel two weeks out of a month anyway. So who cares where you live? So th the flexibility, that's why I use that example. What's the flexibility? I've had more than one case where an individual went for a job interview in Toronto reluctantly, did a good job. And the, the organization said, well, we've been thinking about it, setting up an office in Ottawa. Would mm -hmm. you be willing to, whereas in the old days of no, it's in Toronto. I, who wants to deal with the Toronto commute? Yeah. Well, right now the Toronto commute's not bad. But, it's not a bad thing if it means you're going to work. So flexibility. How flexible is the person? And and I, I hate to be, I'm not judgmental. I hope I'm nope. not judgmental when I meet someone, but the more flexible they are, the more likely they're going to find a job. And the recruitment people, the executive search people that I talk to are all over that. Because now what they're finding is this interim executive, I'll hire you part-time. Um, you to, to tie that into a free agent analogy, yeah. if you're a free agent, I, you're not working, you're not under contract, you could consider taking a two day a week job that may lead to a full time job. Whereas if you were gainfully employed, you're not going to quit your employer to go work no. somewhere for two days a week. So being unemployed can be as a free agent analogy, an advantage. Let's use the Godfather then as the movie okay, reference. Good. Michael Corleone, ultimate free agent. He leaves the army. Not, he might be a lawyer, and but then he ends up running the Corleone family. At, during tumultuous times where there's territorial battles, challenges to the power structure in New York, in surrounding mm -hmm. New Jersey, in the mm -hmm. Tribeca area. So let's go with the Godfather as number two. So that's two points. Give me one more. Okay, let me, okay, one more on, and, and this is gonna be philosophical more than anything. It, right. don't, don't, don't be discouraged. I mean, it's, it's easy for me to say that, but, but you've, gotta, you've gotta take care of yourself in this. And everyone's saying that, your mental health, your physical health, yeah. something I often tell clients, and I told them this before, before the pandemic, and I would, I would even emphasize it now, is, often they'll say, Rob, I need to get my resume done right away. I need to get out there. I need to start banging on doors. I need to get interviewed. I like they're panicked. Yeah. And sometimes it's financial and I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. But what I'll often say to people, and you may have heard this analogy, I think I'm stealing it from Stephen Covey, but it, it's the, it's the analogy of the, the, the science class that has the big beaker and he has rocks and he yeah. puts rocks in the beaker and then says, yeah. is it full? No, put in some pebbles. And is it full? No, put in some sand and then finally pours water in. Put the big rocks in first yeah. in your job search. So finding a job is important, but is it as important as your health? No, no way. Because if you're not well, you're not going to get a job. So health is number one. Right. Family's very close number two. Extended friendships. If you played golf on, with buddies on the weekend or if, you're, if you had a group that you got together to, to meet with, that's important. So when I'm telling individuals to plan their career success, future career success. Right. Do the things that are most important to you other than job search. Now, if you came back to me, Ken, as an example, said, well, Rob, I took your advice and I'm, I'm playing golf three times a week next week and I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this and, I'm, and I got- Completely went up. the other the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, I got six hours left to do job search. I go, okay, well, we have to revisit that. But, but seriously, if you do it the other way and say, look, I'm not gonna see any friends. I'm not gonna watch a movie. Well, you can't go to a movie now, but I'm not going to yeah. do anything that's nice for me because I'll feel guilty that I should be working on my resume. Wrong, wrong move. Yeah. Is that number three? I think that's so. number three. I'm trying to figure out a movie that would capture that, that <laughs> energy from going from isolated to joining the rest of the world, coming out, like rising up as a, like a Phoenix. Well, there's a company, there's a, there's a movie called Company Men. It wasn't that popular, but it has some okay. really good stars in it. It's got Tommy Lee Jones. It's got Kevin Costner. It's got the other guy that starred with Matt Damon in, uh, uh, in the good ben, Aff ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. <laughs> and it's, it's a story, it takes place in the, I won't go too long here, but it's something to look up. It's, 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 it's not a uplifting movie, but yeah. it's the story of individuals that lose jobs in the, in, the, in the US in the Baltimore area because of the shutdown of uh, shipping. And right. one of the individuals approaches it from a standpoint of, I've got to keep up appearances. Yes. And um, I don't want anyone to think that I'm being affected. And his wife, who's got a job as a nurse, he goes to meet her and she goes, 
he's all upset because they canceled his membership at the golf club. Yeah. And he, she says, well, of course you have to do that. We, we don't need to spend that money. We, we need to do that for other things. He said, yeah, but I got to keep up appearances. If I don't do that, people, I think just another a-hole yeah. with a yeah. resume. And she goes, you are just another a-hole with a resume, which is yeah. hurtful, but she's saying, right. what's reality here? You know, yeah. and don't, don't put on airs if you don't have the airs. Now that's, that's one of the negative stories. Company men deals with some positives in terms of people that reinvent themselves and they find different jobs. And, but yeah. it's um, that whole aspect of how you perceive yourself and how you wish to be perceived. You do have to kind of recalibrate now. So company Everybody men, I like that company man. And, and you triggered something in me. I'm going to go with Rocky. When he loses Mickey and he has to come back, and then he loses Apollo Creed, then he has to come back. And then he has he's always losing something, having to come back. So that's why there's like 28 sequels <laughs> to Rocky, Rocky yeah. one, and all those. So um, it's keeping a sense of humor too, Ken, which I mean that's something he goes without saying with you, but yeah, it, yes, it's um, without a doubt. Yeah, not 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 silly humor, but no. I mean I don't know if you're getting I'm getting cartoons all the time about the about this, and I, and some are really really good, other ones are silly, but but. Yeah. Keeping a keeping a sense of humor, and I mean that's important no matter what. But in this time, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I I find that uh, what you tell yourself in the morning when you get going is awfully important. And and, and Chris, uh, my producer, knows I've mentioned this all the time. I believe subconsciously or even consciously, you wake up in the morning and you ask yourself, "Am I in my right place in the right time?" If you're not, then the challenge is to get into your right place in the right time. Because if not, you're going to stay in that lane that's not going to fill your fill you so i feel your heart it's not going to do anything for you but crush you and then, and if you are in your right place then great now go do some great things mm -hmm. absolutely yeah no. i'll throw up i'm, I'm going to watch your time here but the um no. i'll throw in one other aspect that uh was important before covid is really important now and we'll yeah. we'll we'll face that in the future in that people tend to define themselves from what they most recently did yeah. and if you're new in your career, you've got to do that. You, you, a new graduate puts that they're a new graduate at the front of the resume. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, they start putting, filling it in with experiences and job responsibilities. Right. And along with that comes certain accomplishments. So it's one thing I've had people say to me, yeah, I've been with the same company for 15 years. Mm -hmm. What am I going to say about that? I said, well, 15 years, did you have the exact same job? No. Did you work on the same projects? No. So yeah. tease out those those accomplishments that you've got so you're you're not defined by your job you're more defined from what you did while you were in that job because mm -hmm. those things you take with you if you were a director of marketing and sales at the national arts center in uh, the 1990s your accomplishments there are much greater than the ones or different than the ones that are there now so your accomplishments yeah. are yours the job resides with the organization and the, and the last thing i'd say on that is don't limit your network to the people that you were just working with. Yeah. You know people from football, you know people from, from the old CGOH, yeah. you know people from the HR community. Um, you, you need to tap into your network, not just in the most recent. And there's a an, there's an horrible attitude that I think a lot, of, a lot of people have, and that is they think, well, geez, I haven't spoken to that person for five or 10 years. I don't think now's the time to raise. Absolutely it is. Yeah. They need to know you should be standing on the, with a sandwich board on the corner of, of a bank and sparks, letting yeah. everybody know that you're available, that you're a free agent. Don't, don't hide that under a bushel. And they, yeah. I hope yeah. that people won't think you're trying to use them because you're not, you're really just trying to let people know that you're a free agent. So use your network to your advantage going back a number of years. Reminds me of that guy in New York city. He's a singing cowboy. He's out there in his underwear yeah. and a cowboy hat playing a guitar. And most people say, Oh my God, <sighs> That's a fantastic idea, but would they have done it? Yeah, that's right. True. That's and true. The the no, I'm not going to do that. People think I'm crazy. Well, he's crazy, but he made quite a bit of money and did his thing, and and he's got a great story to tell. I mean, he puts that on his resume. Yeah, yeah. that's good. One. Let's that's hope he dresses good. up. Let's let's hope he dresses for the interview a little better, though. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Notman, you are yes. a steely-eyed missile man. Thank you for joining me. Okay, thanks for having me. That was fun. Say hi to everybody in the KW region for me. I will. I will. And, uh, right. and stay safe and stay well. All right. Have a good Canada Day, too. Take care. Thank you. That's Rob Notman. He's the managing director over at Optimum Talent here in Ottawa, the Eastern Ontario region. 
fantastic guy, great community guy, and a great resource. And uh, I fear that you're going to get a thousand new resumes by the end of the day now, Rob. <laughs> you brought this on yourself. You're I'll too good of a man. I'll <laughs> look at them. Not a problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's it for this week. So Rob capped it off the way I thought he would. He hit a home run. I'm excited. I'm going to take my kids now to the beach and uh, enjoy the rest of the day and then uh, get into the weekend. I want to wish everybody a great Canada Day a week celebration. And even for our friends south of the border with July 4th around the corner, not sure how it's going to pan out, but I wish you the best. And uh, these are tumultuous times. we got to navigate. And uh, I hope you're navigating safely. And uh, especially to my producer, Chris, who's in upstate New York, not too far off from Ogdensburg. So Chris, much love to you and the family. Stay safe. And uh, we will connect probably later next week, if not the week after, with some new guests. I'm trying to get Paul LaPolice, coach of the Ottawa Red Blacks, and a couple other people to sign on board because let them talk football and I'll just listen. So there it is. <laughs> Big shout out to Rob Notman, one of the great guys ever. And again, enjoy your weekend and we will talk real soon. Take care, everybody.